Have you ever seen a video on YouTube or someone in a stream that's got music playing in the background and then they've got a visualizer on screen with lines or waves or a, a circle of lines that react to the music and bump up and down with the music? Well, that would be the same effect that Spectralizer has on OBS Studio. Spectralizer is a plugin that creates this effect from any audio source in your stream. And I'm going to show you you. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to show you how to install that plugin today. Now, as we do with all of our plugins, we need to go into the plugin directory on your web browser. So I've already got that here on Google Chrome. Make sure you go to obsproject.com and then go to the OBS Studio plugins page. You cannot miss it. If you just search OBS Studio plugins on Google, it will be the first result that you find. We're going to go to search. And we're going to go and change the category to resources. And we're going to search Spectralizer. And I'm going to press search. And then there'll be only one result. And this is the one right here. You'll know it's the right one because it will have around 210,000 downloads. Uh, and then obviously on the page, it will show you how to do all of this. But I'm going to show you instead. We're going to click download, go to download. It's going to take us to GitHub, which is a reliable and uh, safe website to download your files from. And there are a few options. You're going to scroll down here to where it says assets, and there are 12 assets here. The ones we want, or the one we want to install this plugin into OBS Studio is Spectralizer v1.3.4 installer windows.exe. Your exe file will install the entire plugin automatically. If you want to do it manually, you can download this Windows zip file, this Windows zip bin. If you do want to do it the zip way, I would highly recommend following our other tutorial on how to install plugins so that you know which folders go where. However, for this uh, particular tutorial, choose the exe file. Once you click on that, it will open up an installer and just install it for you. You then need to restart OBS Studio like I'm doing now. And once you've restarted OBS Studio, you might not see anything different. But if you go to your sources and you click plus, you will see Spectralizer in the source list menu. Now, to use Spectralizer, what I need is some background audio. So on my other monitor, I'm going to play some copyright free music. Remember to always use copyright free music when you are streaming or creating content. And now that I've got some background audio, I need to add an audio output capture on OBS Studio so it can actually hear it. So let's go trace speakers. That's my default audio device. And now you can see at the bottom here, it's picking up the system audio. Now, and only now, once I have that audio output capture, uh, it can also be an audio input capture or, or a media source. Anything that makes audio, anything that makes this mixer go green and yellow and red will be able to be programmed with Spectralizer. So any audio source, but I'm using my PC sounds. I'm going to go plus. I'm going to go Spectralizer. I'm going to create new Spectralizer. And I'm going to change the audio source to audio output capture. And as soon as I do that, it will start to pick up my PC sound with the Spectralizer. Now let's go through the settings one by one. I'm actually going to make this a little bit larger on the left hand side here. I'm going to put it right there. Beautiful. Uh, what can we do with the Spectralizer? At the moment it's white and it still looks pretty cool, but we can change a few things here. I can change the mode from bars to circular bars and suddenly I have a circular Spectralizer that I can put around a logo or I can put it around an overlay on the stream. Pretty cool. I also have the wire, which is much, much thinner and takes up less space on screen. For me, it, it, you know, if you've got the Spectralizer, you want people to be able to see it. So I would probably go with one of the first two. Let's go with bars for now, just to keep it nice and simple. Audio source is obviously your audio output capture. Uh, filters change the actual look of the uh, change the look of the Spectralizer. You won't see much difference. It just makes it slightly curvier and less curvier and things like that. But we're going to go with the monster cat filter or no filter even for right now. You can change the color of it, of course. Let's change it to red. There we go. Oh, actually, that looks a little bit. It's a little bit bright for me. Let's go for a little bit of a duller blue, shall we? Let's go for something like right here. 
Lovely, 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 lovely. That's a lot nicer. We can change the width of the bars here. So I can make them really thin or I can make them really thick as well. The bar height, we can make them taller and shorter. Bar spacing, we can add spaces between the bars or we can make them even thin enough so that it's just one thick block. Personally, I like it at the default. Uh, you can use rounded corners and what this will do is round the each end of the spectralizer so that it doesn't become too uh, It doesn't become too sharp on either side. It just makes it fit in a little bit more corner points I can add corner points kind of irrelevant right now and gravity now gravity is one very important setting Gravity controls how much the bars can go up and down now if I increase the gravity you can see that they can barely move at all because the gravity is so strong. If I reduce the gravity, they're hopping around like bunnies. So you want to make sure that this is somewhere around the 0.8 scale. 0.82, 0.85 is normally okay for me. Um, it's still pretty receptive. Logarithmic frequency scale makes it more of a curved frequency, more of a curved spectralizer. It doesn't give you much movement though. So I would stay away from logarithmic and stick with the standard bars. Now, what can you do with this? Well, let's bring up my video capture device. There is, uh, there is my rubbish webcam. But what I can do is I can take the spectralizer, put it at the bottom here. And maybe because that's kind of intruding on my webcam a little bit, I don't want it laying over the top of me. I could right click on that, transform and flip vertical and then move it down. And it means that I don't have such a sharp bottom to my webcam. Instead, it just blends in to this spectralizer, which I quite like a lot. This is the my main use for spectralizer is to fill space that's normally quite harsh and not so nice to look at. So there's the spectralizer, guys. And again, you can change that to any audio source. So let me just show you how I would do that with... Let me turn off the music real quick. Let me show you how I would do that with a microphone. So let me add my audio input capture. I'm going to go add, I'm going to go line in, which is my normal mic, and OK. Now you can see at the bottom of my screen, my mic is being picked up, but it's not working on the spectralizer because what I need to do is double click spectralizer and change the audio source to audio input capture. Now, when I speak, it goes up and it goes down and it's responding to my voice. This can be super, super cool to have around your webcam or near your webcam. And I don't know, it just adds this kind of dimension. It adds a, a futuristic dimension to the stream, which a lot of people really like. At the moment, it's not being very responsive. Let's see if we can change that. You see the bars aren't going up very much. Let's see if I can change the bar height a little bit and uh, put them up. There we go, it's been a little bit more responsive. And you can have a play around with those settings and see for yourself how you can make it more reflective of your voice and the input. But there we go, that's Spectralizer. One really cool feature that will help you stand apart from your main competition.